Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Andrew Trapin. I work on operating systems and programming languages and do a lot of free and open source software along the way. Today we will be talking about Surface 64 test runners and more precisely we will be improving uh, part of it related to running project tests. If you are not familiar with Surface 64 yet, uh, just open this page and read couple sections, at least introduction and maybe a bit more about API. I already did couple more streams or videos uh, on the topic of test runners uh, and how to t test scheme code. You can find them on my channel. And basic information from this uh, article will be very helpful. So pause the video, uh, learn the basics and come back here. Previously, we did a very simple uh, trick to prevent the execution of assert uh, by wrapping every assert into function. But uh, in addition to that, we not only wrap it into function, we also add a property to the procedure, uh, which marks this function uh, with some metadata. And we use this metadata to understand that this function actually represents a Surface 64 test with uh, Surface 64 asserts inside it. <laughs> so this is a very simple macro which creates a function and adds meta information which signals that it is a Surface 64 test. After that you can write tests like that. You put the test name and inside it you use test group, test begin, test equal and test assert and whatever you want from uh, Surface 64 library and uh, we have a custom test runner and helper functions which can go through the model uh, public interface find all the tests and execute them rerun them and do all those other things the only missing thing at the moment is running all project tests so we can run tests for a particular model, we can uh, execute a particular test, we can rerun failed tests, we can rerun all the tests, but uh, we still cannot run all project tests. Uh, the reason is following. Uh, the reason is following. We don't have all the models loaded and that's why we can't find all the uh, tests in the runtime. Uh, so what we can do? Uh, we can do through. Uh, we can go through all the files in load pass, uh, match the regular expression, and use some convention for naming files. So we can like make a pretty precise uh, matching uh, pattern. And when we find uh, a file matching a pattern, we load it uh, into our runtime and we can execute using the functions we already have. So uh, I already started uh, the implementation and here is a very simple function. Let's comment out everything we have here and here. Uh, this is a very basic uh, file tree traverse. Uh, we take all the items from load pass and put it into this function and we traverse all the uh, directories recursively and we get something like this as a result. You can see uh, that there's a pair. The first one is uh, a full or relative pass uh, to the file and the second one is uh, pass to the file relative to our load pass. Uh, we will need it uh, to actually load the model out of this file and we uh, get this one. After that we remove a prefix, for example this one, and get the thing that we can later use uh, to load the model. Uh, so how it's implemented? Our NF 
tw function accepts a path and traverses the path recursively and uh, for each file it calls uh, the following function which accepts five arguments the argument that we really need is uh, the file itself and uh, file flux uh, for short I put a fail but probably we can use flex here okay after that I check that we are uh, we are getting a f a an actual file not a directory or symlink or whatever and for regular files we will do the following uh, we will remove the prefix part because load pass you know uh, can look different it's a list of different directories and uh, for each of such directories we execute this uh, function so uh, the file name that we will get here will uh, contain this prefix this prefix or this prefix or whatever uh, we remove this prefix using this thing and actually it's better to name this variable as load pass relative pass but okay whatever uh, relative pass should be okay uh, after that uh, we do a string match uh, so we use a regular expression uh, to match a fail file name and we use relative pass here but uh, actually I would like to use uh, a complete file name file pass actually file pass let's rename it a bit okay uh, I want to use a complete file pass because uh, we will see later that we match a thing that we don't want to match you probably already uh, saw it but let's execute it one more time file pass okay it works, uh, it produces all the uh, test files inside our project. <coughs> By the way, uh, for people curious about the structure of my project, uh, I have SRC directory which contains the actual code that will be used. Sometimes I put uh, the source code even further, for example, in Guile uh, subdirectory but here uh, it's guile only project so i put it directly in src directory and i have a similar uh, structure tests directory uh, which i add to load pass only during the development when i build the uh, final project i don't need those uh, test files i need them only for actually uh, ensuring the quality of the code or some other properties uh, but for shipping the end result I don't need so I don't add them uh, to load pass when I, I, I ship this code uh, and um, tests actually uh, replicates SRC structure and you can see that inside the repo we have uh, server and uh, inside server we have evaluation tests uh, and if you take a look we have very similar file in an repo server evaluation in src directory but the only difference between those two models is that one of them has a test at the end and another one doesn't so it's uh, a good convention which uh, allows to easily switch between two models uh, by their name and when tests is on load pass so we are in a development environment uh, we easily jump uh, from our usual model to test model and back and forth and also uh, we can execute tests for current model uh, without even visiting the file because we have a convention and it's uh, like easy to understand which tests we need to run but uh, today the topic is a bit different 
uh, so we need to find all the uh, files in load pass which matches the regular expression so uh, let's go back to our test runner and let's uh, let's put it into function define a lot project tests uh, and it will be a function which have couple keyword arguments uh, first one will be pattern test file pattern and uh, the default value will be the following okay uh, looks good looks good uh, and also in addition to that I want another thing I want uh, a function load file function uh, it will accept it will accept one argument and uh, For now, let's let let's just uh, print what we get here uh, like this, and here we will do load load file uh, relative pass. I don't like that file path doesn't have a uh, dash inside it and relative path does. Mm, what about file path? File path. Yes. Like this. Mm? Sounds good. And now let's comment out this stuff. Now we have a function and when we call this function load uh, project tests and actually we don't need the results Oop. okay uh, very good very nice the only problem here Let's print uh, a bit more information. Actually, uh, I want to see the whole file pass. Uh, you can see that all our test models are here and we can load them using the relative uh, model pass. But the additional file is unit test SCM from run current system profile accidentally, accidentally uh, appeared in our uh, list and actually it's not what we want right because uh, it is model provided by guile lib package and uh, it came from external environment usually it should not be in the load pass but here it is uh, what we can do to improve the situation uh, we can make a more strict regular expression like this and you can see now it works what uh, what we did uh, we added uh, tests into regular, regular expression so this pass doesn't match anymore okay sounds good 
to have everything that we need I don't know if it should be default uh, value or not because for example somebody can put the test into different directory and this uh, regular expression won't match anymore so maybe we can relax it because it's not a very big deal that unit test will be loaded uh, <laughs> Loading Let, Let's make it accept two arguments uh, First one is uh, Pass and relative pass Loading so people can see what is actually happening and here load load file file pass and relative pass and what we do we do primitive load pass like this uh, and we will use relative pass okay go to model uh, shows all the models already loaded but let's restart a REPL okay now let's connect uh, let's connect to it and now if I uh, look at into loaded models I will see it anyway because we evaluated this one accidentally let's restart it one more time oh now go to model and there is no uh, test models loaded now that's good and after we execute this function we see that all those uh, models get loaded and now if you go through the loaded models we see all of them very good very nice now uh, now 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 uh, let's clean it up a bit we don't need this one anymore this one is good this one is good mm -hmm. let's write a doc string uh, load all the test all the models matching all the models matching uh, test file pattern file pattern using load oops load uh, file procedure uh, which accepts uh, pass and relative relative to load pass pass a lot of pass here okay okay now our run project test Let's uh, add ice nine regex here. Regex. <laughs> load project tests. Uh, now we have load project test. Let's see uh, what all test models will say here. Okay, it shows all the necessary models very good we actually pretty print so it's easier to see 
what models contains tests. Uh, nice. Now we need just uh, run tests for each of those models. Uh, run project tests runner test models. Okay. Pam uh, pam pam pam. Let's put those functions on top of this one. And here in run project test for test models, instead of empty list, uh, all test models. Uh -huh. Sounds good. Sounds good. The only the only question is where we need to call the load project tests. We need to call it here. Or we need to call it here. By the way, by the way, if we call load project tests, huh? Actually, I don't want it to load those tests every time. Oh, I do. <laughs> all test models, all test models. Load project test. How about this? Load project tests. Uh -huh. Sounds good. And now here we need to call it. And that's it. Okay, let's let's try. Let's try. Let's evaluate the whole namespace. Project tests. Boom. Let's see what we have here. Nice. We got all the tests executed. And we see the results here and uh, it returned a test runner and out of those test runner we can get something more useful. For example, we can get test runner summary, test runner summary, summary, okay, let's see, okay, and it shows the amount of tests in each category. Cool. Now we have a function which executes the test for the whole project. 
what if what if uh, I open a test and make it fail like this and we run this one and now it failed so very good very nice very nice actually I like it works quite smooth Uh, now, now we have we have such uh, a hacky implementation for running uh, project test. We can update the implementation and uh, not use this stuff anymore. Originally, our check procedure call run project test, and it specified test models like this. But now we can just remove it. We can just remove it and do it like this. Uh, so let's let's just type make check. Oops. Pam pam. Executed. Perfect. We can remove this model. We don't need any more to manually specify all test models okay boom boom all tests uh, magit find file file delete okay we deleted this one do we need to export them I think so. Let's update the API bit. Load project test sunk and instead of directly loading it will return a song that can be called later test file pattern loading test module uh, return a song Okay, and here load project tests. That's it. Hop. And let's export them. It's public interface. Get test model. Get model test. One project test. See live. One project. Test rerun. Sunk. Uh, Oops. Uh, all model tests. All model tests. Load project test sunk. All model tests. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> ja, old models. Old test models. Sorry. Uh, one thing that I'm bothered a bit <laughs> that we have a function which returns all test models. models and when uh, load project test models uh, we call it otherwise we just return only the things that already loaded right and here we add load project models like this now let's try it one more time it still works very good very good very nice and if we go and set it to false it doesn't load models and you see no asserts were executed Seems to work fine. Let's commit the stuff. Load. Just run our current. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we need to comment to commit another thing. Uh, to all load all test models Thirty sixty four load all test models from load bus. Okay, sounds good. I think that's it for today. I hope uh, you get the information provided in this video useful, or at least you enjoyed listening to me and watching what I do. Further, uh, we will go and improve array later. Uh, we will go and improve array uh, to make it possible to run tests with Emacs uh, through the REPL protocol so you can make your session your programming session much more dynamic and interactive so you write your uh, tests you go back to your usual model and from your usual model you do uh, some modification you run the test you see the failing tests in separate buffer you see the status uh, in the echo line and so on and you can modify and improve your code and see uh, which test still failing and we run 
it's a failing test and I repeat this process again until all the tests uh, became green and after that you run model test again and maybe after that you run project test to see that all integration tests uh, works as well and continue doing so without leaving your REPL so you can uh, easily reload your namespaces your models and uh, run tests just after that yep uh, that's it for today thank you very much for your attention and i see you in a bit bye